Hey, we can use TwoSignal to automatically subscribe to an HTTP GET request. Cool! But you end up with a read-only signal. Now what? How do you modify that data? There are several ways to make a writable signal from an HTTP GET request. But have you considered a signal within a signal? Let's take a look. One of the pain points when retrieving data with HTTP Client is managing subscribe and unsubscribe. As part of the new signal features, we now have to signal. We pass to signal an HTTP request and it automatically subscribes and unsubscribes for us. However, the resulting signal is read only. If we're simply displaying data, like our list of team members here, there's no problem. But if the user wants to add, modify, or delete any of that retrieved data, we have work to do. We need to somehow create a writable signal from the data in the read-only signal. Let's try a signal within a signal. Here is the HTTP request to get the set of to-do items for the selected team member. Scrolling up, here is the select box. Its change event is bound to the unselected method. Scrolling back down, when the user selects a team member, we next that ID into the subject. That kicks off the switch map to retrieve the set of to-dos for that team member. We use TwoSignal to automatically subscribe and unsubscribe to this request. But since we want to add items to our to-do list, we need a writable signal. First, let's modify the name of this property to raw to-dos for member. Next, we create a computed signal we'll call to-dos for member. That computed signal creates a writable signal containing the data read from our TwoSignal. Notice the parentheses here? We are reading the signal from the read-only signal and storing it in a writable signal. Now we have a read-only computed signal that contains a writable signal. OK, so what can we do with that? Well, we can display the data. Scroll up. When we read the to-dos for member signal, we get the writable signal, as we can see here. So we add another set of parentheses to read the data from that writable signal. Selecting a team member, we see their list of to-dos. Notice again the syntax here. We read the computed signal, which contains the writable signal. So we need another set of parentheses here to read the data from that writable signal. Think of this like a box within a box, and we need a set of parentheses to open each box. And now that we have a writable signal, we can update it. Scrolling down, when the user clicks the New Item button, we create a new item. We want to add that item to our array of to-dos. We start with our computed signal and read its value. This opens the box and gives us our updatable signal. Then we can call set or update to modify the values stored in the writable signal. Here, we create a new array from the original array and the new item. When the array is changed, the signal provides notification and the UI is re-rendered to display the new array. I'll select a team member and we see their set of to-dos. I'll click New Item and our new item is added to the list. It works! Let's take this one more step. I'm going to pop over to another Stackblitz project that separated this code into a service. We want to ensure that the component doesn't directly modify our writable signal, so we make our computed signal containing the writable signal private, then provide a public computed signal. This public computed signal contains the data from our writable signal. We add parentheses to open the box and access the writable signal, then open the box again to read the data from the writable signal. We end up with a computed signal that is read-only. Using this technique, our service only exposes read-only signals, and our components work with those signals as usual. Notice that our template now no longer needs the double parentheses. And since our service has a writable signal, the service can modify the signal value. 
You may be thinking, why not just use the original raw data from the two signal? Because that signal won't reflect the updates done to the writable signal. So, we use TwoSignal to automatically issue our HTTP request. It stores the return data in a read-only signal. Then we define a computed signal containing a writable signal that stores our data. We can then modify this signal using set or update. And optionally, we can define another computed signal with just the data. Since it is a computed signal, it is read-only. The data provided to the component is then immutable and can only be changed by calling methods in the service. What do you think about this signal in a signal technique? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.